hello hello welcome back welcome back to another episode in our scuffed beginner friendly tutorial series it's been a hot minute please feel free to check out our previous videos um where we covered our eyes and our mouth and our eyebrows and other little bits and pieces <laughs> angle x and y physics do you want these left and right up and down angles well I will help you. We're gonna cover our head angles today. We're only gonna do X and Y today. We're gonna work on angle Z in the next video because I I feel that this is gonna be super long. So uh, yeah, we'll do X and Y. It will look better with the Z in, but yeah. I'm not gonna lie, I tried angle X and Y a few times because I tried to work out augmented physics and we finally did it. I'll be able to show you an easy way so you won't have to make the mistakes I did. <laughs> Let's work on augmented physics. My favorite new thing. This is actually my first time using augmented physics, so I'll try to explain it in this video. I also ended up going back into Clip Studio and adding more layers throughout the video. That's why my hair looks different right now. <laughs> okay, let's just work through this step by step. In this video, I'm going to introduce augmented physics. We're going to discuss X and Y parameters, meshing the face, copy and pasting the mesh we're gonna start using glue we're gonna start on our face angle x and editing those parameters we're gonna use tools such as adjusting bezier divisions and conversion divisions we're also going to use edit types and path deformers we're going to move on to face angle y and then our face angle x and y corners copy and pasting forms and then we're going to work on rigging our facial features like our eyes, our eyebrows, our nose, mouth. We'll also be working on the neck shadow and the face shadow and then we're going to work on hair angle x and y. We're going to use a lot of clipping masks in this video for example with the neck and also with the face with hiding hair on certain angles. I'm also going to go over draw order and how to easily see all your different layers when adjusting the draw orders. And then we're going to also learn how to create semi-transparent hair so that our eyes can pop through our hair on certain angles. And finally, we're going to go over our physics menu, so our scene blending settings. Uh, I'm going to briefly talk about augmented physics and show you how to set that all up. And that's about it for this video, so let's get stuck in. XY parameters. So let's start off with looking at our parameters. Under my inputs folder, you can see that we have angle X, Y, and Z. So these are typically the parameters that we use to input into our physics menu settings. And they are picked up by VTube Studio and other tracking programs. The rigging method that I'm going to be using today is called augmentation. This method allows us to have more movement and control over our physics. So instead of rigging on these default parameters, what I'm going to do is create some new ones. So I'm just opening my physics folder and I'm going to create some new parameters. I'm going to call this one org angle x. It's going to have ranges of negative 30, default 0, and then a maximum 30. And go OK. I'm going to drag that down to my physics folder so that I don't get them confused with my default inputs. Let's create org angle y with the same ranges. And finally, let's go org angle z. Perfect. Augmented physics intro. So we're going to rig our head angles on a separate parameter than we usually would. So we're not going to use these ones, we're going to use these new parameters. Now I'll explain this further later when we input it into our uh, physics and scene blending settings in that menu. But basically just a rough explanation is that we are rigging our head angles on separate parameters but they will be connected to these ones in our physics menu. While there will be nothing key formed on these default parameters, the face tracker will still be having an input. So whether these are key formed or not, the face tracker will still pick them up, it will still be read in VTube Studio or your tracking program 
I'll link some useful videos down below which helped me understand augmentation. Lola explained how the movement of these parameters, keyformed or not, will still have an outward physics effect. The reason why we're using augmentation with our physics is because it allows us later on to make use of physics linked movements to make our model look more alive. But like I said before, I'll explain all of this later in our physics menu. Let's just start with the raking process. So let's get started. Creating meshes. So for meshing, let's click on your face skin. You can either go auto mesh with heavy deformation like this. I personally am going to go with a manual mesh edit. I decided to start off with the face line with the manual mesh edit and I selected it on the stroke mesh mapping tool. I turned off mirror edit for now. I scrolled down and you can see that there is mesh width and the number of vertices in the mesh width. I changed that to 3. This tool basically allows you to drag and leave paths to form the basis of your mesh grid. I adjusted the density to 10 and then outlined the face. For this you can also uh, click and drag to add or edit path control points. I adjusted the mesh width so that it could cover enough space around the line of the face. And then you can just click and drag these points. Make sure that the control points are nice and smooth, covering all the areas of the line around the face. I really like this tool, it's really nice and simple. It's an easy way to add a mesh to your face. And it also allows you to edit that line nicely later on with your warp deformer. I grabbed the eraser and just edited these lines up here where the two points connect. Tidied that up a bit. And scroll down, adjust the density to 20, the vertices to 1, and we're going to increase the clicking selection area to 20 picks, click mirror edit, draw a line about a third of the face, and you'll see that the vertical line has been mirrored horizontally. And you'll need to confirm the stroke being edited by clicking shift E. Otherwise the lines that you have drawn will not be completed, they will just disappear. Then I just drew a line down the center without the mirror edit on. You can grab the lasso tool and highlight the area that you want to move and then drag it. And then I just adjusted all the control points along the middle, auto connect grab their lasso tool and you can actually copy this mesh of the um, entire face line and you can go control C tick go into your face skin and control V and it copies the mesh over so that it's exactly the same as the face line and then go OK I did the same to the face shadow but then also use the stroke mesh mapping tool to uh, increase the volume of the outside edges and then went auto connect and done. Did the same for the blushes, just so it can all work together quite nicely. Using glue, I grabbed the face line and face skin, went to manual mesh. You can see that the lines are green. I grabbed the lasso tool, selected all the points and went control G. And you can see that it has now glued all the points together. This basically means that when you grab either the face skin or the face line and you drag part of it around to warp it, like with your warp deformer for example, both layers actually move together instead of moving independently. Face Angle X. So I have a warp deformer called Angle XY Org for augmentation and it's the parent of the blush marks, the natural blush, the face line, the face shadow and the face skin. So for this warp deformer, we're just going to do a basic warp of the Bezier Division 2x2. Two two. Uh, you can hold control and drag the edges 
Make sure you do this prior to adding any keyforms. You want the outside of your warp to hug your face nicely, with the middle point being along the center of your face. Make sure to add your keyforms to the warp. When you drag it to positive 30, your face is going to be looking right. And when you drag it to negative 30, it's going to be looking left. So basically, you can just uh, drag these points, so these bezier divisions, the green little dots, you can drag them to skew the face. And to start off with, I have it 2x2 two two just for a big general edit, and you can increase it later on for a more refined edit. For example, I adjust it to 4x3 and you can see that there are more points that you can select to warp your face from. Yeah, like I said, I just like to start off with a general edit at the beginning and skew the face like so. So if we think about the bone structure when you're looking sideways, what we can typically see is the face line is quite wavy. Your forehead typically bounces out. It dips in where your eyes are because of your brow and cheekbone. It bounces out a little bit where your nose is. There's a dip above your mouth where your cupid's bow is. There's sometimes a little mouth bump and then your chin kind of pokes out a little bit too. But yeah, it is dependent on the face that you're referring to. Everyone's faces are different. This is just a general rule of thumb. I increase the conversion divisions uh, 10 by 10 and I also smooth all for the Bezier edit type. Uh, it's good to have it nice and smooth so the Bezier edit type allows the Bezier division numbers to smoothly connect to each other. And I just play around with this, the number of conversion divisions and the Bezier division numbers until I'm satisfied. I like to think of the face as a big ball. It's kind of like a sphere. So the middle bezier divisions are skewed to the right. The right hand bezier divisions are squeezed inwards, whereas the left ones are pushed out. I don't know if that's a good way to explain it, but I just think of a soccer ball. And I like to have a little dip where the eye would be, a little puff out where the cheek would be. And this just needs to be a general edit. We're gonna go in and refine it later. And once you're roughly happy with it, um, you can select on your face skin and your face line. And then select the Deform Path Edit tool. This tool allows you to link the transformed path to the art mesh and do a rough transformation. We're going to use this to um, tidy up our line so that our face line has less jagged edges. Make sure you have your guide up, make sure to add those keyforms. So I'm just adding some points to create a path around the face line. And these little jagged edges, I treat it kind of like a mountain. Um, I want to smooth out the base of the mountain and bring down the tip of the mountain so that the line is a lot smoother. I don't know if that's a good explanation. And then I just keep on moving around these points until the line is a little bit smoother. And because we use the stroke mesh mapping tool for our mesh, uh, the line is a lot easier to walk. I just reflect over this motion horizontally. I create a warp for all my blushes and add keyforms. And then I use the deform brush tool and I just use that to drag around the, the blush. For a three dimensional look, the blush on the right side of the face is going to be skewed as the face is looking away from you. It's getting smaller 
whereas the blush on the left side of the face I'm making it dragged out so it's getting bigger because that's the side of the face that you can see more and then I also reflect that over face angle Y uh, I create the warp deformer for our angle Y augmentation And you can reset Bezier controllers. I just drag down the Bezier division numbers and the number of conversion divisions. Make sure you add your keyforms. When you drag it to the right, you're going to be looking up. And when you drag it to the left, so negative 30, you're going to be looking down. So I'm thinking like a soccer ball again. <laughs> drag the middle parts up. And then I drag the outward edges down and this creates that sphere effect. I also drag those little lines along the Bezier divisions, those, those little green lines. <laughs> and we're starting to get that look now. I just keep playing around with it until I'm happy. So now when you drag it to negative 30, you can drag all the middle points down and the side points up. If you think about your face, be looking up, your forehead is going to be less visible and your chin is going to be more visible. Whereas if you look down, your forehead is going to be bigger and your chin is going to be smaller, it's going to be more hidden. So that's the illusion that we're creating. X, Y corners. So with our parameters connected, our angle X and Y parameters, you can go to that little burger icon up the top right of your parameter live 2D section and you can select on synthesize corners. And we're going to want to synthesize the corners of both our angle Y and X augmentation deformers. And I'll just make sure that angle Y and angle X both have keyforms on both parameters. And once that's done, our corners have been very roughly and scuffly rigged. <laughs> so we can just go in and edit that. So I just go through using all of those techniques. You can also make your eye and your eyebrow visible just to get a guide for um, how the face should be looking in proportion to the size of your eyeballs and your other facial features. Rigging the eyes. So I create a warp deformer here for my eyes and add some keyforms to both org angle X and org angle Y parameters. And I start rigging in the eye. I start off with angle X and drag the eye in place with our selection tool. And I just use that deformer brush tool. You can hold B and drag your mouse to increase or decrease the size of that brush. And I just squidge it. I squidge the eye. So the eye that is further away will be squished. And the eye that is closest to us will be kind of elongated. It will expand. And you can either use the lasso tool or you can use the brush selection tool and you can select multiple areas of your warp deformer to skew and the eyes are kind of going diagonal. I then reflect this motion over to negative 30 and then I start rigging in org angle Y keyforms. 
it as your face looks up, your eyes are moving up. Again, I drag the middle parts, I drag those middle Bezier division numbers upwards and the outward Bezier division numbers downwards to create that sphere. And then you want to do the opposite for when you're looking down. The eyes will move down, the bottom part of the eyes will be squashed a little bit, whereas the top part of the eye will be extended. You want the middle Bezier division numbers to be moving down, and you want the sideways Bezier division numbers, so the little green lines, you want them to be moving upwards. I kind of like to think of an N for the eye shape when you're looking up and a U for the eye shape when you're looking down. And then I just go in and fill in the corners. Rigging the eyebrows. And then I move on to the eyebrows. Let's make our keyforms. And start with our angle X. And then I rotate it kind of diagonally. And you can use that brush selection tool to kind of warp the area that you want to while leaving the area that you want to stay the same. Again, adjusting the Bezier division numbers allows more precise editing. And then I reflect this over to negative 30. So as you look left, the eyebrow to the left will be skewed, whereas the eyebrow to the right will be elongated. <laughs> and then I work on angle Y, so the eyebrows are going to move upwards. Make sure you have that selection tool. Click and drag. And follow that sphere. You could also bring up a grid to help as well. And then I work on the corners. And reflect it over. So a good way to make your face look a bit more three-dimensional is to have little 3D details. For example, uh, different facial features look different um, depending on the angle. So for eyebrows, uh, there's like a little bump in the eyebrows. So I just think when you're looking left or right, your um, eyebrows will be jutting out a little bit. So I increase the Bezier division numbers um, so that I have a green line in the middle of the brow right on that bump and it just allows you to skew it in a way so that you can create like a little you can create a little eyebrow mountain <laughs> the little tip of the mountain the peak of it it gives your eyebrows more character more depth more 3d illusion so yeah, I just focus on skewing those middle green points, kind of like sideways facing arrows. They're pointing in the direction that your face is angled. Remember to adjust the Bezier edit type as well to smooth all. And then I just do that for all the other keyforms and then um, reflect the motion over on those parameters. 
And wow, we have eyebrows. <laughs> Little wiggly wormies. Breaking the nose. Now let's work on our nose. So I just created a warp deformer for our nose dot, our nose shine, and our nose shadow, and then added some keyforms to the org angle x and org angle y parameters. And again, we're gonna start off with org angle x. Click and drag. And then I rotate it a little bit so that it is following the shape of the face. And um, I also forgot to mesh this, so I did that a bit late. But it doesn't matter, we haven't started warping it, so it's okay. I just added an automatic mesh generator. I did heavy deformation. And now we can start skewing. I created individual warps for um, each item. You don't have to do this if you're on the free version, I just like to do it uh, for a little bit more control with the editing. I also added a deformer path to the nose dot with three little dots and I did the same with the nose shine. This is just gonna allow for easy skewing. And now I like to think that uh, when you look to the side, um, you can see the point of your nose being skewed. Kind of like that sideways facing arrow again, like we did with the eyebrows. And you can really emphasize this nose point with your angle X. I also like to elongate the nose shine a little bit, as well as the nose dot. So the little nose dot will be a little bit longer than how it would be face on. And then I reflect the motion over. And I also edit in the shadow. Keep playing around with it just until it looks right. Having the Bezier division numbers 2x2 two two really helps as well. And then I work on the Y angles. So when you're looking down, the nose shine will be elongated and the nose dot will kind of disappear a little bit. It'll get smaller. Whereas if you're looking up, your nose shine will disappear a little bit, it'll get smaller and your nose dot will be elongated. It's kind of like when you look up and you can see up someone's nostrils. <laughs> That's the effect we're creating. And the little ridge of the nose is kind of squished a little bit when you look up. Whereas when you look down, it's more of like a little squid with nose. And then I just uh, adjust the shadow and keep refining. And it's these little details that really help create that 3D illusion. And voila, we have a nose. <laughs> Rigging the mouth. Okay, we're working on the mouth. Let's grab our mouth, create a, a mouth deformer. I called it org mouth xy and then created some keyforms. So my Bezier divisions are two by two. My conversion numbers are five by five. And following that sphere effect again. 
It's basically just reusing the same technique. When you look up, your mouth will look a bit bigger. When you look down, it will be squished a little bit. So yeah, I just started off with angle Y for this one. You can also see that my blush is covering my mouth a little bit, but we, we fix that later. I end up just getting a little brush tool and squishing it away from the mouth. And then I work on positive 30 for angle X. And the arrow is facing right. Imagine the green arrow. Don't be afraid to rotate the mouth where you need to. I also go in and fix up the chin with my face line and face skin because the mouth really is really handy to know if your face shape is right when you have the mouth showing. So yeah, this is kind of like a continuous process of just refining all the bits until it looks right because um. It was looking a bit weird. I had no chin going on. So yeah, I just uh, made sure to fix that up a bit. Give the face more shape. <laughs> uh, one tip I have is just to be brave with it. Just go for it. You know, you can, you can keep skewing it. And you might be like, oh, this might look better if I shape it this way. Honestly, go for it. <laughs> Give it a go. Because, uh, yeah, changing the chin shape actually really helped with the... I keep saying it, but the 3D illusion. And then I just uh, reflect over those keyforms. And you can also open and close the mouth uh, with your mouth forms just to see if it looks good when it's open, when it's shut. And yeah, that's basically it. I will go in and fix my blush in a bit. Hair angle X and Y. Okay, we're working on the hair. I just start off by creating a warp deformer for all my hair pieces. I call it Org Hair XY. Um, I just wanted to show in this video that things do take time and you do mess up and it's okay. Like, I had to go in so much <laughs> to fix all these mistakes that I made. Um, you'll see that in this video, I started off with a very 2D looking hair uh, when I thought that it was complete and then I slept on it, came back the next day and I was like, oh, it looks so bad. <laughs> so I ended up going into Clip Studio and adding some more layers and I'm very glad I did. It's always worth it if you think that it will uh, make the rigging better. I haven't worked on this shape of hair before, so... Yeah, it was quite humbling. <laughs> it was really nice to learn the different layers that you need. It made me appreciate the art side of VTuber models more because uh, there are a lot of hidden layers needed. Um, but yeah, when you see good rigging, uh, it's also often unseen that there is good art behind it. Um, good thinking as well behind the art. I then grab all of my items and I do an auto mesh. I generate a heavy deformation mesh. Automatic. It looks so crazy with all those dots. And then I just close all those warps up again. And make sure you create your keyform on the org here XY deformer. And 
and I'm creating another deformer under it for all my fringe items. So yeah, when you go to the right, so 30, positive 30, the hair is going to move with your face. I just increased the Bessier division numbers because uh, my hair is quite long, so it needs a bit more of them to actually be able to warp it correctly. And here I move the middle green lines to the right a bit. I move the right green lines to the left a bit. And I move the left green lines further left. And this is just following that sphere effect again. And you can also kind of angle it as well. I have the Bezier Division uh, type, the edit type, as retain control structure, but I will smooth it out with smooth all later on. And I just go through the individual warps for each hair item, and I kind of wiggle it around, move it to how I think it would look on certain angles, and then I create a joined ear warp as well for my piercings and my my cat ears. And the hair is something that um, it can go very wrong or it can go very right. <laughs> it went very wrong for me. <laughs> At the start, it went, it went, yeah, it was wrong. I found out that I had drawn my layers incorrectly for my hair. I don't know what I was thinking. Like, why did I cut it off on the shoulder for the right side? I don't know. <laughs> but I ended up fixing it later on. And I'm actually really happy with how it ended up looking. I'm not normally happy with how things look. I'm normally kind of neutral, like, meh, could be better, could be worse. <laughs> but... Yeah, I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. Um, yeah, don't be fooled. I know it looks bad right now, but <laughs> it does get better, I swear. So an important part for angle Y is that your the back of your head will become less visible when you're looking up. And the top of your head is skewed and squished and I move the um, the bows downwards more as well when you're looking up because it's kind of falling at the back of your head it's moving with that ball if it's pinned there and then uh, if you're looking down it's going to be the reversed so you'll see your scalp more the bottom of your hair will be moving down with your body, squished maybe, and your bows will be moving up as it's pinned to the ball of your head. Sorry if I keep repeating myself, but these are uh, basically the same ideas, the same techniques, and that's also why I like angle X and Y because it is repetitive and it really ingrains and embeds those 3D ideas. And you get more and more used to uh, how things look and how they should look. Next shadow. 
and here I'm just doing that uh, neck shadow so I kind of move it with the face When you look up, the shadow's gonna move down. When you look down, the shadow's gonna kind of move up and disappear a little bit. But it's also gonna move with your body. Yeah, just make it follow your chin, the shape of your chin, because that is what is casting that shadow. Neck clipping mask. So you can see under my deformer section and under my part section, I have a chin circle. So we're going to be uh, utilizing inverted masks here. Uh, you can also use it to invert your skin by your ears. This creates a 3D effect, but I'll make a separate video on that. Um, I have cat ears, so I won't be doing that for this video. Uh, but yeah. Now, <laughs> I've just revealed my clipping mask, and I know it looks weird. It's just like a black circle. You can use anything you want like um, the shape of your face or like your pupil because it's going to be invisible with the opacity anyway and you can just reshape it to the size that you need so we're going to use an inverted clipping mask and this is pretty much going to allow us to hide this chin line uh, when we're looking up and down left and right it's just going to help us create a more three-dimensional look that is also why I like separating the face skin from the face line because that's a fundamental step for this uh, clipping mask to actually work and to actually hide the line. They need to be separated. I'm just going to drag it above my face line. There we go. I'm going to just start off by going up here, creating an automatic heavy deformation mesh. Great. And make sure that your chin circle is above your face line. I'm going to grab the ID for the chin circle, copy it, go to our face line and paste it in the face line clipping ID section. On the face line, select invert mask, go back to your chin circle and reduce the opacity down to zero. And you can see that it has now hidden the line on the chin. And theoretically we can move it around and we can make invisible which section we need to. So currently we have no keyforms on it, which is good. So we can drag it to set its default position. I'm gonna drag it up here just because I don't wanna hide the line when I'm staring straight on. So, let's start adding our keyforms. I'm going to start off with angle Y, add 3. Let's drag it up. And you can see that it makes this invisible, which is good. But I'll need to adjust how this line looks because you can see it's a little bit jagged. So I'll go in and fix that soon. Yeah, let's just get this clipping mask right first. So I'm going to grab this tool here. I'm going to hold B, make it smaller by dragging the mouse. So let's just start dragging this. I think I'm reasonably happy. I think I'm okay with that. It looks a little bit weird, but we'll fix it. Okay, so... We can see that it slowly disappears. And I might make this move down a little bit. That's not showing up. Yep. I'm gonna drag it a little bit down. Sweet. And now we can add in the angle X, so add three keyforms and jiggle it around. I think there's good. So 
So it looks like this, where we're moving left and right. And you can see it just gives that kind of three-dimensional look, that little illusion going on. So I'm gonna go in and just edit some little touch-up stuff, like with how this angle looks when I'm looking up, just to make it a little bit more smoother. good to me and then down here I'm gonna increase the acceleration so when you look down I want this to move up quicker so that you don't get that little bit there while you're looking down and you can see that it moves up quickly and you control shift C and on the opposite side, control shift B. This one, control shift B. And you can just keep playing around with it until you're happy. I think I'm happy with that. Let's save our progress. Importing extra layers and fixing the hair. Okay, so here is the part where um, I redrew some hair parts. I dragged the Photoshop file into Live2D and replaced the current file. Um, with this, just make sure that the layers are called uh, entirely different things to the layers that you currently have, otherwise it will replace those layers that you have. For example, if you had uh, your boob or something that was called layer 1 and then you drew an extra part on a different document and imported it in and that was also called layer 1, your boob will become here. <laughs> it will become the new thing that you imported. But you can use that for like a, if you wanted to change the color of your hair or something just call it layer one if it is called layer one already and then it will literally replace that layer in live 2d. But yeah I imported the items in, I meshed them, warped them, and started fixing the hair a bit with the kind of 3D illusion. This part did take a while and um, yeah I had to keep on working around with it because I, I haven't done this hair shape before and I didn't have a reference which is probably silly looking back now but I think it turned out all right. Um, I wanted the effect like uh, when you look for example left it will reveal more here so that the side of your head is kind of being shown more whereas when you're looking front on the side of your head would be hidden so i really do that with the fringe and extra other hair strands that are actually hidden behind the front here when you're looking straight on And I also use clipping masks here, like uh, with the strand of the bow. Um, I use an inverted mask so that it's hidden by a hair strand when it's looking front on. And as you look sideways, the inverted mask moves away from that bow piece, the tail of the bow. And like the chin, it creates more of a 3D illusion. So yeah, when you're looking sideways, your hair becomes more spread out compared to when you're looking straight on, it's more condensed. And the side of your scalp is also revealed more. And I just moved the bows with the side of my head as well. So one bow gets bigger as it's moving closer to the screen 
and the other one becomes smaller as it's moving away. I just want to show you a quick trick. Okay, so we have an issue here where our hair is covering our face. So we're going to just create a quick inverted clippy mask. So copy, paste. And I'm going to drag this one down. Okay, so the glued one is on top. We're going to grab the one that isn't glued. And I'm going to reduce the opacity down to zero and make sure you do that for all the keyforms. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's just grab this clipping ID. So the clipping ID for our invisible face skin, uh, I'm going to turn on invert clipping mask, control C for this ID. I'm going to look sideways. I'm going to grab the hair that I want hidden. So this one, this one, and this one. And paste the ID here. And invert. Uh, voila. But you will see there is an issue. Because when you turn this way, it will also be hidden here. So let's go back to our face skin that's invisible. Go here and drag it like so and now your hair is not invisible on this side so it's just a quick little fix for hair so that it doesn't cover the face for certain keyforms ears I imagine more of the inside of the ear being revealed when you're looking up and the top skin of the ears are kind of covering the inside of the ear when you're looking down. If you're looking sideways and the ear that's moving further away has the ear skin covering the inside of the ear more and vice versa the ear that is closer to you actually shows more of the inside of the ear. I also move the fluff of the ear accordingly, so like when you look up, the fluff moves down, when you look down, the fluff moves up. And I'll also be changing the shadows a little bit more. I want the shadow to kind of disappear when you're looking away behind the fluff and kind of uh, get a bit bigger and be more prominent when it's closer to the camera per se. And then I just um, adjust the inverted mask for the skin so that the hair isn't showing. Also, uh, let me know if you prefer this style of video where I'm doing a voiceover. Uh, normally I actually record my voice while I'm editing, but uh, this video is so long I decided to listen to music while recording it and then doing a voiceover afterwards. And now working on the face shadow, I create a warp for it, make sure that it's meshed and then start deforming it. So it's kind of hidden when you're looking down. 
and then revealed more when you're looking up. I make it follow the shape of the chin. I just think about where that shadow will be cast. For example, uh, by the hair and by the bones of the jawline. I also decided to do a little fun thing where I um, created a toggle for short hair. I just created a new warp deformer for it. And it looks like this. So when it's toggled on, the positive one, uh, the hair all gets shorter. Each uh, strand of hair had a new warp on it for the org angle X and Y, just so that it wouldn't interfere with the current warps and how they are currently deformed. I'm deciding whether to do uh, different physics for the short hair compared to the long hair, but I'll need to work out how to do that. Because yeah, I don't I don't want to mess up the hair, but I'll I'll give it a go. It was quite fun though doing two different hair types and I hit the body as well just so you could see um, the back of the hair and how it looked. Draw, order, and canvas layer rotation. If you're wanting to have a look at all the different layers and maybe change the draw order of your items but you have a lot to go through, you can click and hold E and then drag sideways and this moves your canvas. If you want to go back, just hold E and double click on the background. And it brings you back to your starting point. So don't worry, you can always undo it. So let's hold, drag, and now I'm going to hold W. And I'm going to separate all of these layers. And here you'll be able to see the draw order of your items. So it looks like these are all around 500, whereas these ones are all behind. So now, for example, if we wanted to move this bow, you can just click on the item and you can increase the draw order by sliding this bar. That's just an easier way to see where all your layers are. What you can do is also uh, click down here, the multiple view. You can have one canvas up to see your draw order and then one canvas up for all your other rigging. That can just help organize your rigging setup. So I'm done with this now, I'm just gonna exit it. Great! And remember, if you did swap around your canvas, you can just hold E and double click on the canvas. And you're back to normal. Semi-transparent here for an overlapping eye effect. Now utilizing this tool, I'm going to create a hair overlapping eye effect. This is gonna take a lot of draw order arrangement so we'll just work on that now. So first of all, I'm going to make my eyes a higher draw order than everything that's on my face, including the mouth, the nose, the eyebrows, the skin, the blushes, etc. We're also going to make all of this fringe around here on top of the eyes with the draw order. And then the hair behind will stay at a lower draw order so that it can look like it's in the back and it can look more three-dimensional. So I'm just going to arrange those now. So here I have grabbed all of my eye items. I also grabbed my angry shadow because that's going to be sitting on top of the eye. Okay, that looks like everything, which is great. So now for the fun part, you can either individually drag these up and down, but I'm going to save some time and 
I'm going to go over here and type in, let's say, 550. And you can see that our eyes have now moved forward. So now what I want is for, oops, sorry, my mouse, <laughs> my mouse is broken. My scroll wheel is temperamental. It just doesn't behave. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> we've got that. Now let's grab our fringe. I'm going to bring it to 540, uh, maybe 530 actually. Okay. So what I can see here is that I actually want the eyelid to be behind the hair, so I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to send this back to 5.30. Great. And now let's see how that is. E, double click. Middle mouse button to drag. Okay, that looks a bit better. What you can do is you can select the parts of here that you want to be going over the eye. And now that we've got that worked out, that those are the pieces that cover our eye and we want them to be overlapping, what you can do is you can control C and control V. You can paste those pieces, increase the draw order, let's say 550, so that it's going over top, and then reduce the opacity down to get your desired look. You'll need to do this for all of the keyforms that you have. I can see that when I turn certain angles, I can see the new layer kind of peeping through. So I'm going to grab this fringe. I'm going to grab the ArtMesh ID for it. I'm going to select Invert Mask. I'm going to grab the bang. Make sure that it is the reduced opacity one that you're selecting. And paste that in there. Invert. And now it won't be popping through. And do the same for this bit here. So that is our overlapping effect done. So yeah, that's just a little fun tool using draw order. And let's go to our longer here. And that is the long here also done. Setting up augmented physics. So now that we've got our angles done, we've rigged it, we can now work on our physics. So we're going to make use of physics linked movements. Let's go to modeling. Open physics and blending settings. So for augmented physics, each of these movements like X, Y, and we're going to do Z later on, they each have their own key formed physics. And the inputs for these movements are these blank parameters up here. So VTube Studio, for example, still picks up that these are the primary parameters. So these up here are input into VTube Studio still. So in theory, all we need to do in these physics settings is we need to link these physics that we created on a separate parameter. We just need to link them to these blank input parameters. And that's how you can create a chain movement effect. So let's say we had an on or off outfit toggle. We'll be able to chain that toggle to these augmented physics. And in a separate group, those augmented physics are gonna be chained to these blank inputs. And that's how you can chain different movements. So what we can do is we can play around with these settings. So if we want our model to keep the offset of our parameters, you can select angle. And if you want it to bounce, you can just select position. I will go more into toggle groups later on that we will input into the body movement, such as those on or off outfit toggles. But for now, let's just focus on our angle X and Y. So starting off the augmentation. So to start off with, let's create a group. I'm going to call this Augmented X Angle Physics and go OK. You can add, add the blank input here. Select 100, select Angle, go to Output Settings, Add. Oh, yeah, make sure you have a pendulum. <laughs> Then select add and your output parameter is going to be your augmented angle x so your input is angle x blank your output is augmented angle x which you have rigged okay so let's play around with these physics settings now
key point is to make sure that the scale is up, otherwise your model won't move at all. Let's just try uh, 40. I'm going to increase it a little bit, maybe 45. I think I might want more bounce to it. Increase that. Let's try 0.65. It just gives it a bit more movement. So we can do the same now for Y. Let's add. Add your angle Y as the input. 100% effectivity. Angle. Let's add a pendulum. And under output settings, let's add our augmented angle Y physics. Let's turn the scale up and adjust this. So let's go 0.65. Keep the duration. And you can just copy these if you'd like. It will be dependent on each model. It'll be subjective. So just play around with it. I always like to go a little bit more extreme. In the physics menu because you can adjust these in VTube Studio itself but I think that I like this. Great! We've got our X and Y done! Our model is moving! Woo! So obviously this will look a bit better when our hair is all rigged in with our physics but that's probably going to be after the Angle Z video that I'll make next. The Angle Z video! <laughs> Angle Z video! The Angle Z video will be pretty easy. We'll delve into rotation deformers and then we'll go on to the actual hair physics. So we'll get it all wiggly, all bouncy, bench bench. I'm just going to try my short hair that we made and we can see how that looks as well. I will probably keep on refining this. I am never fully satisfied with it. <laughs> that could probably go closer to the face on the left. So yeah, we'll just keep working on that, and that's the fun of it. But yeah, that is... Whip, 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 whip. Those are our angle X and Y physics done. I'm not gonna lie, that was such a long video, I'm so sorry, but I wanted to go into everything, fully cover the different tips and tricks that I use. Uh, if you have any others, feel free to comment them down below. I really appreciate you guys and I've had some really nice comments down below. I just want to say thank you. Yeah, so that's everything. I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll be going over um, Angle Z next. So yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> Woo! Wobbly wobbly. You can also test this out on YouTube Studio if you'd like, but uh, I'm lazy so I'm just going to leave it here. <laughs> Okay, make sure you grab some food, grab some water, take care of yourself, and have a lovely rest of your day or night. Bye!